Hi, welcome to Frat Props. My name is Dan, and in this one, this tutorial here, what we're going to do is we're going to take this old Falcon tank here, turn it into a terrain feature, which can be used as an objective marker, or just even just call this terrain. So how we're starting, first of all, is I'm going to actually put this onto, um, I'm going to base this on an MDF board to give it actually some, some structure and some stability. The MDF I'll be using is this actually, this off cut I've got here. It's nice and thin, you know, it does flex, very easy to work with, but it will have all the rigidity that we're going to need for this project without adding too much weight. Okay, all right. Now what we're going to have to do first of all is work out how much of this to use. Like this piece as it is, is too big. So what we'll do is we'll sit the Falcon on here and then work out roughly what size we want to make this terrain piece. Now probably we want to take these corners off. So I'm just going to mark that that way. Like that. And probably we want to go about here and then round it out a bit. All right. Now, because we've done it that way, it's going to move these pieces out of the road. So we can function as well. Now, the easiest way to cut this sort of MDF is just with like an exacto knife or a Stanley knife. Okay. I'm using this one here. It's just a very cheap generic one. Just a retractable blade on it. Now, all you need to do is score and snap. Now, we're not following the curve. I'm just going to do a straight line to make the snap easy. And then, once we've done that, we'll get sandpaper, and then we'll follow the curve a bit better. Okay? So, we're just, we're just going to score it. Now, you may need to score it multiple times, depending on the thickness of your material on there. Or if you're using, like I say, a cardboard base or something with, you know, less density to it, you may not even need to do this at all. You may better just use it. Okay, maybe I'll just use scissors or something like that. You see there how easy that was to do? Just scored it, bend it over. Now you do get a rough edge. That's fine, that's why we're going to use sandpaper. Okay, let's go again along here. Again, not perfect, but good enough. All right, take that tip off as well. The more you cut off at this point, the less sanding you have, the more time you'll save yourself. The one you can cut through deep enough. Just do a bit more. Okay, now we'll go back to the main one here. It's going to go straight across. Remember, it does not have to be 100% accurate. See there, I've cut over my line. Doesn't matter. Just maybe try and be slightly smaller. There we go. Off the corner and the other one. This one's being a pain. All right. I prefer the retractable blade knives because if you retract the knife blade straight after you're done. You can't bump or hurt yourself while you're working. All right. Let's get rid of the rubbish as we go. Next step is going to be sanding. That's going to be boring. So we'll, I'll do that in between the films. Now, what I'm going to do is, because with this model here, this one here is very worse for wear. You'll see it's been just, you know, cut apart, glued back together. It's missing pieces and things like that. To make it not look like it's just, you know, a piece of, piece of rubbish I found on the side of the road, so to speak. I want to still make it recognizable as the Falcon it is. So what I want to do is I want to kind of base it, but I want to kind of make it look like it crashed, like it was shot down. So I kind of want to base it on a bit of an angle, so to speak. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to use some of this styrofoam sheet. Now this here is just from a, a box. I pretty much just cut the box up into flat panels and I use it all the time. You know, it's just a great way to get rid of some of the rubbish you got sitting around your house. You know, these boxes are great if you don't have them at hand. Easy way to get them is a lot of fruit shops have them, or anywhere that deals with refrigerated goods will have them. Okay, most places just throw them away when they get too many. Some places do sell them, but you will sell them. Get a buy them for like a dollar or two per box. It's really cheap, and you'll find that for the small amount you need per project, it's going to last you quite a while. All right, now yeah, notice the piece is too big for the board we have and too big for the model. So what we'll do is we'll take a handy marker again. Now I'm just going to roughly trace around the model. Now I just want the outer perimeter. 
I'm not too worried about the internal detail. Oops. Probably should have paid attention on that one. You know there. All right. Now what that's going to do is give me a rough indication of where this is going to sit. Now I want the front to be lower than the back. I want the back to kind of stand up because we still have some of the rear here. Now a lot of the parts that are missing, I'm going to cover with, with rubble and debris and things like that. You know, I'm going to have it partially overgrown and things like that as well to hide some of the other imperfections. So what I want to do is pretty much cut this. I want to leave excess on the outside to kind of make it look like stone or even just, you know, hill slope. And then I want to sort of slice some of the front off of the foam to sort of emphasize the angle. So it's going to kind of sit on a weird angle, but it's going to be very obvious as to what it is. But it's also still going to be high enough to provide good cover in game in that way. So what I'll be doing is around the front, I'm not going to add a whole lot of extra to the front. Probably just a bit like that. Maybe the same this side. Again, I'm going to cut into that once I've done it. I just want to get the rough shape so I can glue the block to the board. Okay? Because we've got to wait for the PVA to dry, sticking it to the board. That takes a while. It can take up to a couple of hours. So... Instead of wasting that time, I'm just going to do that now, that, and then we'll come back once it's actually dry. All right. So in the meantime, let's just mark it out what we're going to do. And I'm just going to pretty much leave like a two to three centimeter border around most of it. Grab our big knife and then trim it. Now, I did put the blade a long way out because if I use long which smooth strokes I get a clean edge and the clean edge means I'm not dealing with all of this breaking up all around the place and making a lot of mess again just slow strokes over there don't throw out anything you cut off just yet may come in handy cut this tab off the box You find that you know you can take pieces, glue them back on different parts to make things higher. You make it grudge however you want it to be. Just hold that out a bit so I can feel, see where the blade went. Again, not rocket science. You don't need to be precise with any of this. All we're doing is rough. Now, so you can cut all the way through there. You see the rough edge? That can leave a lot of mess around. I know I'm leaving rough edges. I'm going to cut more detail into this once it's done. I just want to get a rough shape. The rough shape is still bigger than the board, but that doesn't matter because once we've got it all sort of set in place and glued, we can take care of it from that point. Now, I know I haven't sanded it yet. I'm going to glue it before I sand it. So it's just my personal preference. That way I'm not waiting around again. Now, best thing to do, sit that on top of your board roughly where you want it to be. Just make a few marks so you know where it goes. Now, all those marks are doing is telling us the border for where we're gluing. Keep the glue inside that. And you should be good. All right, so you're applying your glue. This is just normal PBA glue. You want a good coverage. You don't want too many air bubbles in it because air bubbles later on can cause problems, can cause warping and things like that. Now, you can just decide to smooth that out if you want to or just place it straight on top. I'm just going to go straight on top with it because this is a bit of terrain. It's not the hardest thing to work with. And you see the glue oozing out the end here as I sort of squeeze it down. That's fine. All right. Once you've got it on there, just pick it up. Just have a quick look around the edge just to make sure it's not obviously raised off at any point. If it is, you may want to sit something heavy on it to weigh it down. This one's actually sitting quite well, which is good. Because it means I don't need to worry about anything like that. Okay, now we've come back down to the foam's drying. I'm just speeding up the footage of this part here just to talk you through what's happening now. Now what I've done is I've come along, I've laid the falcon back on top of the, the foam, just used a marker just to mark out the, the angle of the slope I want it to run on, roughly where it's going to sit, 
and things like that. And then I'm just shaping the foam. You can see it's just very roughly shaped, just using the knife, just to kind of hack into the foam, get get the, the correct level, select correct slope happening for it that way. Alright, so yeah, constantly test fitting just to make sure it's actually going to uh, sit where I want to for the terrain piece for the final look. Yeah. Now, during this process, you've always got plenty of options to readjust how you're going to do it. If you think the slope's not going to look correct and things like that, you can always turn the model and readjust. You can glue foam back on. What I'm doing here is I've taken one of the one of the wedges of foam I've sliced off. I'm putting it back up on the top to sort of prop the, the rear of the model higher to sort of make the slope look a little bit more continuous. Now, because that foam has just been sort of hacked off randomly, it's not going to be the best fit. So I will need to come back to it later and level it. But in the meantime, once that uh, section is dry, I've come back with the marker and all I'm doing is just drawing sort of rough detail lines on the foam for where I want to actually carve um, different sort of features in it to make it look more like rock. So all I've really done is just gone with the marker, drawn sort of like a, a basic pattern around the raised edges and the vertical sections that I want to make look appear like rock and then just going along with my knife and just cutting just a small V sort of groove it's only going to be about oh, two to three millimeters deep and all that does is that's just going to highlight the the different sort of texture that we're going to put in here all right again this is just all sped up because it'd be very boring watching all of this okay. now while you're working if you if I'm not carving that a line's too, too difficult to follow or that you need to add in additional, just do it as you go on there. Once you've actually started to carve it, it will actually appear differently. So you may want to make sort of changes on the fly as you go. So, yep, still working along there. Just sort of following it out that way. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish carving all of that out. And then once this is all completed, the, the foam will need to be coated in PVA to seal it. That will also harden the foam so that it will be less susceptible to damage and things during, during games and things that way. All right. So yeah, I'm just floating another wedge of foam underneath just to fill any caps. And that way just to make sort of a more stable base for the for the falcon to sit on. And then what we'll do is when we come back in part two, we'll have all of the foam ready to go, and then we're going to continue with the with the terrain piece build. And we'll get it all finished up. Alright, thanks for watching.